Hello, Seven Days to Die fans. My name is Russian Dude, and I am the creator of Survivor's Katana. So I'm going to assume that you've already downloaded the file and already placed it inside of your game directory mods folder. And next steps would be to actually install the localization. Now, instead of actually going in and uh, manually copying over the localization entries and making things uh, more complicated and bring in more ways to complicate things. Uh, I've gone ahead and created a batch script. Uh, simply just run it. It'll ha bring up a prompt saying what it is. You'll press any key. You'll see that it has everything you need to know. It's fairly simple and straightforward. You just press 1 and enter. It does this thing and puts everything inside of the localization. Now the batch is foolproof to a point. One thing you'll note is if you try to run it and the files aren't in place, so if for some reason uh, this is not in the right location, you'll try to run it, there's an error saying, hey, we're missing some files, it'll let you know what's missing. So we'll go ahead and move that back. Uh, another thing is if you have for some reason, uh, or some may make the mistake of putting the folder into the game directory directly instead of the mods folder and you try to run the bat it'll tell you hey you're trying to run it from a diff different location uh, move it to the right one so those are just a, a couple couple things to help avoid any errors uh, but after you run that batch script if you go into your data folder if you want to just double check it actually made the change you'll notice that the localization uh, for both quest and uh, normal it has a backup file to it and if you open up the file at the very bottom you'll see your entry the same goes for the quest so after you've done that it's ready to launch and you could I actually have the game up already here so uh, one of the things that I've done that I had actually quite a bit of fun doing was implementing a uh, quest chain to unlock the katana and actually all the bladewood weapons. Uh, you can still unlock the hunting knife and machete through the uh, hammer and forge perk. I didn't remove that. Uh, I used to have it removed but I decided um, against that uh, so I updated it again. Um, so to actually get the quest after your basic quest chain and you place down the crafting or the campfire you'll start the Way of the Blade quest. Now what happens if you already have a game started and you already completed that? Well I made it, I tried to make it simple and if you have just a simple piece of paper you could actually craft the Way of the Blade note. And you can start the quest. I'll fix that. So you'll see the very first thing is to uh, gather a large bone and to craft a bone shiv. I thought I had a bone on me, but I don't. Grab that really quick. And craft that and complete the first quest. Alright, so yeah, the first quest is to kill five zombies with the bone shiv in your hand. Uh, let's go on a little bit of a montage. I'm going to cheat this really quick. And we're back. So once you complete the first quest, you will receive the next unlock, and you can actually now use this to unlock the ability to make the hunting knife, as you'll see there. Now there are a few other quests in the chain, I'm not going to go over them, um, they are all listed in the Nexus mods, uh, so I'll leave you to read that or you could experience it on your own. Uh, so we'll go on to the actual katana itself. So let me go ahead and grab the rest of the books here, uh, we have the uh, Tonto, Machete and the katana. Uh, first, let's grab the Tonto really quick. Uh, the Tonto is a uh, free asset in Unity. 
Um, just downloaded it just as an extra thing to add in. Um, it's free for anybody to use. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, to start crafting the katana, you have to actually go into the forge. You'll need a crucible, you'll need a tool and die set. And from there you can just type in katana, search for it, craft the blade, craft the spacer. Then for the handle, we'll craft that. So when you get all your parts, you can actually assemble the katana. And then you get this sexy beast right here. No, not that. <laughs> this, my pride and joy. It took me very long to make, as I had to learn Blender, uh, 3D modeling, of all from scratch, from the, not knowing anything about it, to making this. So this is a custom model that I created myself. One of the few things you'll know when you look at the actual katana itself is that there is a description here because we added or ran that bad script uh, and you'll notice here that says the base 10 percent chance I'll read I'll fix that geez that's base 10 percent base uh, to dismember and also harvests a little better it's the same with the Tonto uh, 10 percent increase with extra harvest so I designed the katana in a way that is end game, uh, late game, it, it's meant to be with you, hopefully for the whole time you're playing uh, Seven Days to Die. Uh, it is meant to keep up with, uh, you know, late late stages, late game stages. Uh, it does do a lot of damage once you have all of your perks into the blades and you have all the mods inside of it. Uh, it does have a bit further reach, and it also has. Uh, a much higher or not much higher but it has a higher attack speed uh, than the machete uh, so that's the gist of the katana uh, survivor survivors katana um, one last thing to note is I, I did model it this way as my uh, image of a survivors katana would look something similar to this than an actual Japanese style katana just because you know those things are super difficult to make so yeah uh, enjoy uh, and I don't know if anybody will notice but I have right there on the spacer a little gold spacer there um, has the letters RD on it it's my personal watermark